All right, it's great to see you all this morning. So what I thought we would do is I'm going to read day one from the winter edition. If you would like to purchase this, I did put a link in the description of the Facebook Live. It will take you to our store. We have it in a Kindle version, or you can buy it in a print copy. And actually, the Kindle version is free when you join the Homeschool Alliance. All right, blah, blah, blah. Day one, a gracious face, winter. Throw it at the wall, see what sticks. Let me introduce you to play. That is, I'd like you to play with your homeschooling tools. Rather than focusing so much on getting it right and scheduling enough time and completing the objectives, what if you saw your manuals, your books, the pastels for artwork, the piano, your yardsticks and calculators, computers and binoculars, writing prompts, dissection kits, vocabulary cards, and field guides as toys in a big box waiting to be opened and discovered? What if you skipped chapters and went straight for the single most interesting concept in the entire book, and it turned out to come nearly at the end rather than at the beginning? What would happen if you tried to build the catapult before you learned how to hammer nails? Wouldn't you find yourself suddenly far more interested in nail hammering with this fascinating project in front of you that can't continue until you've got the basics mastered for balancing the little nail between your fingers and smashing it with a swing of a hammer? Sometimes the end leads us to the beginning and that leads to enthusiasm. What if when you read a chapter about revision in writing, you scan for one key idea that stimulates brand new thoughts and skip all the insipid ones about tightening your sentences or embellishing skimpy paragraphs with additional detail. What if you simply went for the best, brightest idea, such as hiding a secret or foreshadowing a future event within the budding story? If that grabs your attention, go for it. Why not? Why not play with the toys of your curriculum. If you try a little, you might find you develop a taste for it all. These tools are under your control. <laughs> you get to decide how to use them. It's perfectly fine to throw your attempts at a wall and see what sticks, rather like testing spaghetti noodles for their doneness. The most difficult part of being a home educator is that you feel you are flying blindly. As a result, you put far too much trust into the textbooks and materials as though they hold the keys to educating your young. But they don't. They offer you a possible pathway to mastery. That's it. As the one in charge, you can determine which pieces actually accomplish the goal. Not only that, Please enjoy the educational process. If you open the writer's jungle, my manual for writing, for instance, and you find yourself curious about dumb writing assignments, why wouldn't you skip directly to that chapter and read it? It might scratch your itch. It's okay if your child hates the topic funnel or resists the study of literary elements for today. That's just today. Find some other tidbit worth enjoying and exploring. You may circle back to, to the items that were resisted and have more success once a child buys in through joy in another aspect of the program, whatever program, not just mine. I literally have no stake in anyone approving every teaching I offer. I have a huge stake in your happiness at home with your children. I would imagine you do too, or you wouldn't even attempt this slightly demented program of educating your children of multiple grade levels all day, every day, without a break from your charges. You can trace the birds in the field guide without ever looking at a real bird, if that's what suits you. You can choose to never read poetry at tea time and only instead read geography terms or watch movies. Your homeschool is under your control. But even more than that, it is meant to be wonderful. Play with the materials. See what happens when you allow your imagination to fuse with the orderly structure of the text. 
You may find, for instance, that jumping rope while skip counting is more fun than doing it at a table. You may find that emailing your child's father at work the five amazing facts about his favorite football team is more engaging for your young student than writing a mini report. Try a little, test it, see how it feels, skip what disinterests you, trust the process, not the product. Trust yourself, not the invisible educator not present in the room. My goodness, <laughs> you are all adults. You know what you know, and you know how to find out what you don't know, and you won't cover it all anyway. And what you do together with your children is going to be enough because you can never do it all. Anything you miss, I promise, your kids will meet it again in college, or they will never need it again. Or they can ask Jeebs, let loose a little. January is a good time for that. Quote of the day, I'm just going to apply it to my whole life. Kim Stewart. Sustaining thought. Sometimes the end leads us to the beginning, and that leads us to enthusiasm. Hey, so let's talk about it for a few minutes. You have January in your sights, and there are two kinds of home educators that are facing January. One group lives below the equator, and they are ramping up for their fall, for the launch of the school year in February. They are compiling materials and shopping for the best tools and thinking about the strategies they're going to use with their little Aussie kids or their Kiwis or wherever they are in South America. And then there's the other kind, and that is those of you north of the equator. You are ramping up for what I call the re-upping moment. You've already had the fall. All of the book bindings are a little bit cracked. All of the tools are a little bit worn. The energy of fall has dissipated and the cold has kicked in, at least in some parts of the country, some parts of Canada, some parts of Britain. And as you feel that pulling in moment arrive, now's the time to shift your energy a little bit. Instead of assuming that newness can lead you, now is the time for curiosity, sustained exploration, for watching movies or doing crafts or going on bundled up nature walks because it's important to get outside and still use your bodies. Now is the time for in-depth art exploration and going to a museum. Think about ways to shift from the structure of fall into the mood of winter, of that feeling of re-upping, discarding what didn't work, embracing something new that you didn't get to yet, that you didn't get to try. This is your moment to shift into cozy. There's a term that the Danish use called hygge. It's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. I and know I'm butchering the pronunciation, but what it means is twinkle lights, tea in a mug, soft warm blankets, wearing slippers, making a fire. Because in Scandinavia in the north, in places like Alaska, the sunlight is dwindling to almost a precious nothing. And there is a lot of time spent in the dark. So in order to create a sense of home and warmth and community and coziness, they are intentional with indoor lighting. They use candles and logs on a fire. They keep their twinkle lights up. They hang star silhouettes in the windows. Part of what they are experiencing and exploring is how do we create this pulling in time without going into the darkness that lower mood, that feeling of isolation and coldness. So I invite you to imagine your homeschool through that lens. One of the suggestions that I've made back when uh, I deal with parents who have teens who don't like writing, a lot of times I suggest to them that they make this recommendation to teenage girls. Just tell them they're not allowed to write unless it's the middle of the, middle of the night and they've lit a candle. They can only do their writing by candlelight in the middle of the night, at midnight. They have to, oh, you see them writing at six in the evening? Sorry, no, you have to wait. 
In other words, rethink the context, add a little bit of magic, create a little glow. I saw Mary Wilson on here. She had uh, an Instagram, I think it was, a couple weeks ago, where the inside of all the bedrooms were lit up with strings of light. Mary, tell me if that's not you, but I think it's you. <laughs> and it's because it was too cold one year to hang string lights outside. So they changed their mind and they did it in their kids' bedrooms. And now that's a December tradition, hanging twinkle lights in a child's bedroom. Well, what child would not love that? I mean, I would go to sleep with twinkle lights on if I had them in my bedroom, even now. I find myself putting them all over the inside of my house. Now they've got those, have you guys noticed like at Pier 1 and Crate and Barrel, they have LED lights with battery packs. So you don't have to be near plugging them in. You can put them up on your mantle and there's none of those dangling cords that, you know, dogs and toddlers want to rip out of the wall or trip over. So you can imagine creating this other experience. Maybe this is the time, especially while there are holiday baking sales, to stock up on some good scone mixes or hit Trader Joe's and buy vanilla cake and pumpkin bread and cranberry scone mixes so that you can whip together the poetry tea time and have a good snack. You know, light a couple candles like that. Throw out the scone mix. Gather a few books. <clears throat> Maybe you don't even have poetry books on hand. So you just pull out whatever books you've got. Picture books from the little kids. Art books that you have on the coffee table. Maybe you just grab all of the photo albums from your childhood one day. Or you get your yearbook from your high school and show them the difference between homeschool and school. You get to decide what this looks like. But creating space for coziness, for pulling in, maybe you make tea and today's lesson is how to knit. Because once everyone can knit, they can be knitting or doing those little potholder looms while you watch movies. How about the extended version of Lord of the Rings? <laughs> I say that with a warning. They love it. And I usually wear out by f hour four. Uh, but all of the Harry Potter films, all of the Disney movies. I just watched Frozen with Johanna the other night. What a wonderful film. <laughs> you know, now's the time. Maybe this is the season where you take everyone out for a matinee and you go watch Moana. Remember to add some magic to your experience. And the winter in the north really lends itself to that energy. We have a joke in uh, Brave Rider that fall is for classical or scheduled education, winter is Charlotte Mason, and spring is unschooling. And the reason I say that is that that is a little bit of the homeschool energy cycle. So if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're in the gearing up. You're in the good fall energy of we can hit these targets, we can do structure, we can have lesson plans because everybody's energized to start again. But by winter, unit studies, um, taking it slow, reading aloud next to a fire. I have a friend who used to do s'mores in the fireplace for her homeschool. Have you ever done that? Roasting marshmallows in your fireplace? Now, she told me they had actual floor not carpet next to their fireplace. So you might want to keep that in mind <laughs> or put out plastic or something so that we don't drip sticky marshmallows all over your gorgeous carpet. But these are ways to enhance the homeschool experience and still get what you need. Usually what happens is you come off of fall and you haven't accomplished everything you thought you would because who doesn't do this? You plan an entire year's worth of material for three months <laughs> because you know you have good energy. So you're like, we've got to get it all done. And then December hits and you're like, gosh, there's so much we didn't get to. And then the holidays take it out of you. And January comes and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm too tired. I can't get back to this sort of discipline that I had in the fall. Well, you don't have to. That's my point. You can enter into the winter now with this other vision. Instead of how do I cram a bunch of things in, think about how do I let a bunch of things go? How do I narrow the focus? What emerged in the fall that deserves more attention? 
Maybe your kids really got into measuring stuff. They just want to go around and measure stuff and calculate stuff and keep a little notebook about all the sizes of things in your house. You know, this happens with children. They will get interested in something that you see no purpose in. Give them their head. Let them continue. Find tools to support the thing that they are obsessed about because winter is a great time for that energy and you don't know where it's leading. So if you have a child who all she wants to do is bake Sculpey clay miniature figurines, winter is the perfect time for that. How about just involving the whole family, putting on classical music in the background, and for hours at a time sitting with the clay and making an entire set of little fruits, little chairs, little ornaments that go in her house. Yeah, somebody says pop culture for her older son. Kathy says 2017 is the year of Comic Con. There you go. So this is the time for those things. Those things you say you want to get to if you could just get everything else done, start there. One of the things that I learned the hard way in homeschool is that if you allow for your kids to pursue what they're interested in first thing in the day, they sometimes have more energy for what you want them to do later in the day, later in the morning. Start in the morning with what makes them excited to get out of bed. Don't be such a, you know, puritanical mom that you say, well, you're just out of bed. We have to give your best energy to this math sheet. Do you realize that sometimes using your pastels or painting on an easel or building with Legos is so satisfying and it discharges the happy energy so effectively that when they then come to the table to do the math page, they're actually ready to give a different kind of attention because they got to use their happy energy for the thing that makes them happy. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's what this next season is about. That's what January is about. So to recap, this book, A Gracious Face Winter, day one is called Throw It at the Wall, See What Sticks. And I want to encourage you to think about what would be fun for your family to look forward to in the winter. I want you to think about something you can include into your lives, something you might let develop or evolve that you didn't consider to be valid or worthwhile. One of the things that you might consider is injecting some new games. Tabletop games are the perfect Christmas, Hanukkah, Solstice, Kwanzaa gift, right? They're the perfect winter holiday gift because they're for the whole family. And there's something you can do on the first day back into your homeschool routine. Instead of starting with the textbook, pull out the tabletop game. We actually have a blog post that has a list of games recommended by my son, uh, Noah, who is our, you know, premier gamer in the family. So I'll make sure that Jeanette or me, or Jeanette or I, oh, I can't talk, that Jeanette or I post a link to the blog entry that has our video conversation about tabletop games and then the list of games he recommends because those could be great for your family. You can also introduce what I call 1960s traditional games. We loved jacks and pickup sticks as two of the games that were really popular with my kids. So you could put those in stockings, you could put those at each child's breakfast place on the first day back to school, back to your routine. Something that reimagines the winter quarter differently than the fall quarter. Something that makes them know, oh, we've shifted energy. Maybe it's folk music or different kinds of movie soundtracks that you know they love that are only for when you do copy work. Think through ways to bring that energy back into your home or to develop it if it's not there and use it for the next uh, the next semester, the next quarter. And if you, let's see. Oh my gosh, Robin, thank you. Thanks for saying it's the best one you've watched. Wow. I know it makes me want to do them every day because here's the thing that I love. I love that you help each other. So my job is to do this, to blow on the sails of your little boats. My ship has sailed. 
You know, my daughter Johanna's home, she works for Brave Rider. I've got kids all over the country and world. I'm not doing this with them anymore. But you're all in your little boats, right? <laughs> so here I am, putting some wind in your sails. But here's what's so cool. You are all so much more creative than I was. I constantly tell my team, I give them these ideas and then I go on Instagram and see the implementation and my mind is like blown. I'm like, I want to do it again. I need grandchildren or I need to borrow somebody's kids because you're fabulous implementers and you're also fabulous creatives. And all of you have the capacity to reimagine. This is not unique to me. What's my gift is the long view, right? That's my gift, the long view. As I was going through the stages of development as a home educator, I did all the things you do. I overscheduled. I got disillusioned. I saw another philosophy and I chased the shiny philosophy object till it wrecked my family. And then I backpedaled and regrouped. And then I yanked out the textbooks. And then I threw the textbooks away. <laughs> I did all of that, just like you. But the things that I learned along the way was that if we paid attention to what creates joy and connection, we got all the academics thrown in for the bargain. Isn't that something? If I made the priority pleasure, connection, depth, reading aloud, sharing delicious treats, lighting a few candles, putting on good music, handing over the expensive video camera, giving a whole day to video game play. You know, those are the things that my kids actually remember. And yet they all went off to college too. Somehow we managed to get math in there. Somehow we managed to prepare them well enough with science. Somehow we managed to read enough literature. Does that make sense? Uh, Noah recently posted on my other son Liam's wall. Liam was asking people to share memories that they had with him. And Noah shared the memory. Oh, it was Jacob. It was Noah and Jacob, because uh, it was Jacob's birthday. And so Noah shared a memory of playing online games with Jacob for an entire day when they were young in our old house in California, our, our condo. And it was one of the happiest days, happiest memories of his childhood, and Jacob remembers it. And Noah even said, I don't know what came over mom that we were allowed to do that for a whole day, but I'm so glad we did. And they had all kinds of memories from it. Have you ever seen that meme going around? It has like a television or a computer or something. And it says, when we ask for a person's best memories, they never say a TV show. They never say a screen. It's not true. It's not true. Some of my best memories, some of my kids' best memories are tied to watching Lord of the Rings, watching the BBC Pride and Prejudice six-part series, watching Sister Wendy videos, watching Winged Migration when we were into watching uh, birds outside in the backyard, about Mario Kart and Rayman and playing games on the Wii, playing games on the computer, having LAN parties. These are all real. Some of my best memories are sitting in front of a computer screen, screen and typing passionate, thoughtful responses to somebody's point of view in a discussion group I'm a part of. We do these because they give us pleasure. They are not just time wasters. They are not just deactivating the brain. So I want to challenge you to remember that it is okay to make great memories around technological devices because that's already happening. That's already happening. You cannot stop it. Why are you on Facebook Live this morning? Why do you keep an Instagram account? Why do you take pictures of your life and share them with friends? If all of that screen time was an Etch-a-Sketch brain and you'll never remember it and it had no value for you, it all has value. It's just we want to create a rich life, a life that has a feast of ideas, a creative well that opens doors to a variety of subjects, connections, points of view, right? And all the tools help us do that. And when we enter in with a spirit of joy and optimism and curiosity, we can see what that tool does 
instead of rejecting it out of hand. Awesome. Wow, lots of hearts. I think this must have resonated. So what that means is <laughs> you can buy that game for your Christmas present and not feel guilty about it. Just saddle up. Have your child show you how they play that game and why they're excited about it and what they're good at. You know what's crazy? Whenever you try to play one of their games, don't you discover how skilled your kids are? I mean, I can never even remember the A and B button on the Xbox controller, what they actually do, let alone navigating all the maps, knowing where other people are on the screen. I mean, literally. And what's so adorable is my boys in particular, who were big gamers, they barely need to read maps. They have such great orientation skills. They can glance at a map and know exactly where we need to go. I've never had that skill, not once in my life. <laughs> I would benefit from a little gaming, I think. It would probably help me. Yeah, the games are hard, Christy said. Absolutely. Oh, Christy. Well, I'm just going to give her a little shout out. Christy is taking over my Instagram account tomorrow. You can follow along and see what her family does with the Brave Writer lifestyle. She's got some great pictures and wonderful stories to share, so I hope you'll follow along. All right, I'm just gonna announce our prize winners one more time. Then I've gotta get busy because I got family coming and I, my house is not ready for them and I have work. So today's winners of A Gracious Space Winter, our beautiful cover with the hot chocolate. Don't you love this cover? Let me just be honest, this is my favorite one. I love the winter edition. The winner of this copy, one for self and one for a friend for Facebook is Betsy Cypress and her buddy Marcy Gets Tan. I believe it. I think that's how you say her name. And then the Instagram winners are C.E. Burger Davies and her friend Sarah Grace 1987. I will post that on Instagram right now. I will add those names to the um, thread from yesterday about the book. If you want a copy for yourself or a friend, I believe you can still buy it for, from Amazon Prime and get it in time for Christmas. So feel free to do that. Uh, and last teensy tiny request, if you have this book or have read it or love this book, please post a review on Amazon for us. You did such a fabulous job with the fall book and I would so appreciate it. It's one way you can give back for all the ways that I try to give to you on Facebook Live. I really appreciate it. And will we have another one of these Facebook Lives before the end of the year? Yes, we will, because <laughs> between now and then I will miss you. But secondly, starting on December 26th, we have a contest that begins and it is for 12 days the 12 days of Brave Writer. If you were a part of it last year, you know how much fun it is. We give away a prize a day and all kinds of good happens during those 12 days. Super, 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 super fun. So you have that to look forward to and we will be busy Facebook living that whole week. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Have a fabulous afternoon and I will see you again soon right here. Mm -hmm.